to be back with you this evening just knowing that you are gathered around. Amen. Even though we're not able to be together in the building, but I feel, amen, the closest with you even though it's through the way of uh, Facebook Live. Amen. Here in the auditorium, there's just such a sweet presence of God that I feel here today. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and mercy today. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I hope that you're feeling what we're feeling here in the building today. Amen. If you will just stop long enough just to feel after the Lord, I promise you he will make himself close to you today. Amen. Welcome, all of you. Amen, that are joining in by the way of Facebook. We welcome you here, amen, at PULC abroad. And uh, it's such a great honor to have you with us here this evening. And it is my prayer and hopes and beliefs that God is going to minister to you before we leave uh, or, or before we're done this evening. Amen. I feel such a sweet presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. He's such a faithful friend. I'm so grateful and thankful for him. If we could just go before the Lord, I want to bring a couple names before you this evening. Uh, Brother Ken Deloche uh, is looking at having to have some surgery on his back. And I want us to keep Brother Ken up in, in our prayers. Brother Mac Long will be going tomorrow morning for eye surgery. And uh, we need God's hand of protection. I'm just believing but when he gets to the hospital tomorrow, Matt Rouge, God's already going to do the work. Amen. Let's pray for our sister uh, Chastity that God would touch her. She is, amen, having to go to the hospital this afternoon. But we know a God that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond what we can ask or think. I want us to pray for our doctors and our nurses, the medical field, that God will continue to help them and touch them and strengthen them. But I want us to pray this evening. I felt something. Amen. I want us to pray against this COVID-19, the virus. I don't know why I feel so charged of the Holy Ghost right now over that one thing. But I know the power that's in the name of Jesus Christ. And I know that he's able to do what we ask of him. And God is wanting, desiring to show himself the strong and mighty God that he is upon the face of the earth in this generation and in this day. When we go before the Lord in prayer, I want you to understand that the virus has, is no match for the blood and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Sickness has to go. Amen. Whatever this COVID-19, it has to go. It's not by the scientists able to find something, but I can tell you it's a name. And that name that's above every other name still has all power in heaven and in earth. And I just feel that God is about to do something on the face of the earth. Amen. And I just feel that in my spirit this evening. So would you bow and bind with Pastor this evening? And would you help me to pray for Brother Ken, Brother Mac, and Sister Chastity? Heavenly Father, I ask you today, Lord, that you would look down upon Brother Ken. Lord, he's been in a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort in these last few days. And I pray, Lord, for a miracle in his back. Lord, you created every vertebrae and every disc. I pray, God, whatever needs to be repaired, fix it. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over Brother Ken. I pray for Brother Mac today. I pray your hand of anointing, God, to reach down and touch the Lord Brother Mac's eye. Lord, you see what's been going on, and Lord, this process has been overwhelming. Hallelujah, and I pray strengthen Brother Mac today. I pray, Lord, that what's ever going on in that eye, God, that you would fix it tonight. Lord, I miss 
God, we bring this before you because we know you're more than able. I pray for Sister Jackson to the scene that God, that you would touch her body. Lord, anybody that needs a miracle in their body tonight, Lord, you're able. Lord Jesus, you're outside of this building. You're omnipresent. You're all places at all times. And I pray, God, dear Lord, that you would touch the body. In Jesus' wonderful name, I pray for our doctors and our nurses. Strengthen them, God, in this hour. God, we understand that this has been going on for a while. And I pray your hand of a strength will be upon them. And God, dear Lord Jesus, I come against this COVID-19. And God, I come to stand behind this pulpit tonight. And I come to declare to the COVID-19 virus, this plague, this sickness, God, wherever it came from, it has no authority. It has no match according to the word of the Lord that I have read. And Jesus, all power is still in the name that's above every other name. So I speak right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Virus, this blood of Jesus is against you. Ezekiel 16 and 6. I revoke that scripture. I speak it. I prophesy that scripture. And God, I, de I decree and declare, God the Lord, that this virus to be released in the name of Jesus Christ. You get the glory from this God. May your name be glorified in all the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Such a sweet move of God that's here today. And it is my prayer that you feel what we feel here in the building. Amen. It is my prayer. I prayed before I came out of my office and just I knelt down at the chair before I walked out. And I said, God, only you know what needs to be said over these airwaves tonight. I don't know the circumstances that's on the other side of this, whoever's viewing this tonight. But I pray that you would feel the gentle hand of the Lord God Almighty reach into your home, reach into your, into your circumstance today, and let the presence and power of God minister to you. Amen. Would you worship with us as we sing? And though 
I'm so appreciative of what Brother Danny Fox said today on our uh, on his devotion. When you come to the end of yourself, that's where you find Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I have a word that I feel that God has given to me this evening. And uh, yet again, uh, I told my wife when she came into the office, I was just so excited to see what God's doing. God is speaking in this hour. And more than ever before, amen, the word of God that he's been giving me to preach behind this pulpit has become, has come very easily. And I, I don't mean that disrespectfully to hours and hours of praying and trying to hear from the Lord, but once again, God gave me another nine page message for tonight. And I just understand the Spirit is speaking. But we got to have an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say. It's my prayer tonight that you would hear the voice of the Lord. You would hear beyond my voice and hear what the Spirit is trying to say to the church. Amen. Tonight, my, my subject or my, uh, I don't know if this is going to be a preaching moment or a teaching moment or, amen, I kind of felt like even just, I come kind of dressed kind of casual this evening and even felt like just putting a chair up here and just talking to you tonight. But I feel like God's got a word that's going to reach down and touch somebody this evening. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Oh, God. Lord, I don't know who it is on the other end. But I felt something get a hold of me a while ago. In a, in, a, in a need for a miracle in their body right now, Lord, would you send that miracle? God, you said you formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed the first breath of life into the nostril of of Adam, God, and Adam became a living soul. I don't know who's struggling tonight, God, but would you breathe again and allow that life-giving breath to enter back into that body. Oh, Jesus, you're more than able, God. You're more than able. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. If you are weary tonight, can I just encourage you? Amen. Just call on the name of the Lord, for he is close as a mention of his name. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God. Come close to us this evening, Jesus. To a weary heart, God, that's overwhelmed. God, to somebody that's dealing with depression or just... God, just having struggles right now in their life, I pray strength. Send angels from heaven, God, tonight. Send your heavenly host, God, into the need. Let them know, God, they're not forsaken. Let them know, God, they've not been forgotten. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. My subject for us tonight is this. Removing the barriers. Removing the barriers. In most of our, in, in most areas of our life, we have boundaries and areas that would limit us. We understand that we are, we are limited. And even now, knowing that what we face in this life today, we, we are limited within ourselves. That's the reason why that we have to remove the boundaries of ourselves to allow the presence of another world to walk into the circumstances that we are facing. The property that you're living on has boundary lines. You only own what is within the boundary line you possess because there's boundaries that has been set and you can only, amen, have so much that's within the boundary. Your body 
has boundaries uh, of how old that you can go without rest or sleep. Your body has boundaries. Your vehicle has limits on it on how far a gas a tank, a tank of gas will take you. The telescope can reach beyond what your natural eye can see, but still it is limited to just how far that it can reach into the galaxies. To the most fittest athlete in the world, they have boundaries of how far they can push their bodies to the point of exhaustion. Planes can only climb so high until they reach their boundary line and they cannot go any further. Most things that we have, we have boundaries. We have a limit of where we could go in the natural. But I pray that tonight, that before we leave from here, that God's going to remove and you're going to remove some boundaries and allow the presence of God to step into this physical world in a supernatural way. What would the possibilities be if there were no boundaries for the church to operate in? What kind of atmosphere would we have different in our world today if there was no boundaries in what the church could do and operate in? Let me go a little bit further. What would you do for the kingdom of God if there was no limits of what you could do? I love what Matthew says because it helps us to have a little better clarity and understanding. When Matthew, in 19, he says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. With men there are boundaries, there are limitations. With men's ability, we have seen it firsthand in our world and what we are dealing with and fighting with today. Everybody's trying to find a cure. Everybody's trying to find something that could change or transform. Why? Because we have boundaries in which we can operate in. But I come to tell you that there is something that's beyond the boundaries of human ability. There is a power that this world has never experienced before. Right. There is a move of God's presence uh, that is hovering above the atmosphere, just waiting for somebody uh, to move the barrier, uh, a barrier of your mind, a barrier of your heart, a barrier of your thinking, and let the presence of God come flooding into your soul uh, and into your spirit, yes. if you will remove the barrier, amen, the power of the Holy Ghost is going to come in. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. God has brought us to this time that we are in right now. And I believe that there is a harvest that is ready. Can I just tell you that we must be about the Father's business? Amen. I know that we have been isolated. Uh, we have been told that we have to keep our distance. But I come to tell the church today, it's time that we put our hands back on the plow. It's time that we begin to get ourselves back on what the calling of the Lord is. Uh, and that is to reach the lost. I see the reports of people getting baptized and coming to church parking lot. And I've seen the picture of where they're kneeling down on a hot asphalt because there is a hunger and there is something that is drawing in our world today. And people are wanting to know more about this God who brings hope, who right. brings healing, yes. and who brings salvation. Yes. I've come to declare to you today and across these airways, God is doing great things. 
We've heard enough of negativity. We've heard enough of all the things that's going on. And it's sad I'm not here, amen, to, to say anything negative about what's going on. It's a tragic moment. Uh, but I want to lift your eyes a little bit higher today yes. and to let you to know and declare to you that Jesus uh, is on the move uh, and he's doing great things upon the earth. Uh, we've just got to remove the barriers out of the way. Uh, amen. And the flood of the Spirit uh, is going to come on this world like we've never seen before. My God, I feel that there is something uh, that's wanted to be released from heaven uh, as it was in the days of Noah. The open up of, of the windows of heaven uh, and the rain come down. Uh, I'm not talking about a natural rain, uh, but I'm talking about a spiritual rain. Uh, I believe that there is something uh, that's wanted to be birthed uh, back into the church. Uh, but we got to get the barriers out of the way yes, and the boundaries that we have put yes. uh, upon what we allow God to do. Amen. Amen. My oh, goodness, Amen. I thought I was just going to sit down and just talk to you tonight. Oh, my God, but I feel something welling up in my spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. I've come to declare to the church body of PLC and our wonderful community of Laranja and to all those that have, amen, contacted us from Tennessee to Texas, uh, from Italy all the way down to Africa. I come to tell you and to declare to you the God that's in Laranja, Louisiana. He's right there right now. He's moving. He's flowing. He's operating. I know you can't see him, but I promise you beyond what your natural eye can see, there is something moving in the atmosphere. Oh, my God, the Holy Ghost has charged the atmosphere tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, yes, there's a lot of going on in the world, but I come to declare to you today, God is doing great things in this hour. Hallelujah. God is not quarantined. Uh, and God has no boundaries. And God is not limited uh, in, by anything or by anybody or by any virus. Uh, I'm not making fun or belittling what's going on. Uh, I just want to tell you, God is still on the throne. Uh, I just want you to know that God is still able. Uh, can I tell you, I got two praise reports uh, of two people that thought that they had the COVID-19 and even had the symptoms of it. Amen. But the church went to prayer. And when they got the results back, they were clean. There was nothing wrong. Can I give you the can I give God praise for that tonight? Amen. God, the doctor didn't do it, which I'm thankful for what they're doing. But God, amen, gets the praise for what he is doing. Hallelujah. 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 His power. It's just as strong now as it ever has been. He's got power to forgive and he's got power to save. We just cleaned out our Baptist Street and, uh, here at PLC and we made it ready. Yeah. Because I come yeah. to declare to the church body and to those that are listening by the way of web. If you are desiring, amen, to be baptized uh, in the wonderful saving name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I want you to know it, 20155 Mill Plant Road, Naranja, Louisiana. We're going to make it available so that that baptistry behind me, uh, amen, the waters can be troubled. Uh, hallelujah. It's time that we begin to get back. Uh, hallelujah. I know we got to have social distance, uh, and we will do it very orderly and according, uh, amen, to what has been said and established uh, but I'm ready for people to start walking and saying will you pray for me I need to get a hold of this Jesus you've been preaching about I need to get a hold of what you've been saying something's been moving on me I've had people call us and text us and tell us that they feel something they never felt before a friend of mine it ain't pastor did he preaching to you it's the presence of the almighty God there ain't nothing that this flesh can do for you but I can tell you about a God, he can do anything for you. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. My goodness, I know it's Wednesday night, but I feel charged of the Holy Ghost to tell you, God oh. is on the throne. Uh, he's large and he is in charge. Yes, he is. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So anybody that wants to be baptized or filled with the Spirit, we are ready for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. It shouldn't take COVID-19 to wake us up. 
Amen. We should have already been woke up. But I can tell you I'm grateful for what has happened by the COVID-19. Because there's people flooding into the streets. And they're beginning to pray and repent. Amen. Not for just the, re the repent for themselves, but repent for their country. And right. repent for the sins of the world and the, yes. and the nation. Yes. If I can call you, if I can encourage you tonight. Amen. I want to I, I encourage you, those of you that are listening. Repent and call on the name of the Lord while he is near. This is what I felt in my office this afternoon. Tell them I am near and this is a good time for them to repent because you've got to repent when the presence of the Lord has come near. Woo! Oh, God, I thank you for coming here to us this evening. Reach for God while he is reaching for you. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off until tomorrow. Amen. Don't put it off tomorrow what should be done today. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Our tomorrow is not promised. Amen. you got to do what you're going to do today. Right. Make a decision today. Right. Follow after him today. Right. Hallelujah. 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 Our tomorrow is not promised. Life is but a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. The church... Amen. Here at POC, I know for sure. Amen. The church has left the building. And the church has now been activated outside of a structure that we have been calling the church. But we finally have understood the church is not the structure no. made with man's hand. Right. But it is the structure that God made with his own hands. That's right. Because he understood when he formed Adam from the dust of the ground. Right. He put a void in place inside of Adam. Oh. Because there was going to come a day. Yes. When this earthly vessel was going to house the presence of the almighty God. Know ye not that your body yes. is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. My God, what in the world are we scared about the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit? We've got so many people that are scared to death. But can I tell you, it's a Holy Spirit. It's a Holy Ghost. And what we need is a whole lot more people filled with the Holy Spirit and fire. Yes. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My goodness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I come to give you my all tonight. Because I feel something stirred in my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I declare that there shall be victory in the land. We will come out of this. We will walk through this. Hallelujah. The fire couldn't burn this. The floods couldn't destroy it. Man's word could not deter it. I can tell you that the power of God that we have in the word has always been here will always be here. Yes. Oh, God, help us, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So finally, the church has left the building. But I hope now that the church has finally got outside of this four wall structure, I hope that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Come on, say it. I come to talk to you tonight, PULC. I come to call to you tonight, P.O.C. is your pastor. I come to tell you this is not time that we lounge in our easy chair and we slip our iced tea and we just worry about ourselves. Uh, can I come to declare to you tonight there's still a world that needs to hear the good news of the gospel. There's still a world outside of your living room, amen, that still needs to know, hallelujah, in this tragic moment, God is still able. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, hallelujah, I come to call on you tonight, PLC. Hallelujah, as long as there's an empty seat, as long as there is a, a soul that's not filled, amen, with the spirit of the living God, we're, our work is here is not done. And this is where we share the hope that's beyond this life. PLC, we should be sharing the gospel right. of the good news yes. so that we don't have to die in our sins. Yes. There is a life beyond this one. 
I'd rather this life be shortened so that I can be able to go to that life than to have this life extended and that life not be prepared for. God help us. Amen. We need to be reaching out to every lost soul that we know. God has given us this opportunity to have the time to get to know him deeper. But are we knowing him in a deeper place, in a deeper way? I wonder, has our prayer language, has it increased? Has our Bible reading went a little bit deeper since we have been quarantined and called Amen. And now most of us are at home and, amen, not able to go to work, but only work in a few days. I wonder, has our relationship with God, has it increased since this opportunity has been given to the church? Has our family life gotten stronger? Or are we spending more time with our children? Are we doing what God has given us this opportunity for? And that is to be able to strengthen our home. Right. The word of God is being preached and shared in more homes than ever before. It's, a, it's bad? Yes, it is. Is this a tragic and sad moment? Yes, it is. But I come to tell you that God's spirit is moving far beyond, amen, anything that we can ever do. Even here, I never would have dreamed of. Amen. I know what the Lord spoke to me several years ago. That Laranja, I, this little church in Laranja, would be able to affect the world with this gospel message. Amen. In Bible, in my prayer time, God spoke to me and said that when they do hear and they see, they're not coming to, amen, to see a reed shaking in the wind, but they're coming to see the demonstration and power and anointing and fire of God falling. Amen. Can I tell you, it's time. Yes. It is time. It is high time. Yes. Amen. For us to begin to move yes. and operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. As I was uh, putting this message together this evening, I had a song come over my spirit. And, and, uh, and I, I started to get my wife to sing it, but I, I just figured I'd just do it myself. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's a simple little song that says, Look what the Lord has done. Yeah. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, can we just take a five-minute praise break? Uh, and can we just give God some praise? Uh, hallelujah. I know it's tragic. I know it's bad. Uh, I know you want to get out. I know you want to go into the shopping mall. Uh, hallelujah. But can I just tell you, God's still able. God's still on the throne. He's still moving. He's still operating. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. Sometimes there is some good that even can come out of the bad. And I don't know about you, but I am looking for God to reach down and to touch these wonderful families. Amen. That has been uh, affected by all this. And I do believe God is there with them. And I'm praying for every family, every home, that God would touch them and strengthen them. Amen. Uh, God has removed the boundaries. And this is what I wrote down and I highlighted in my notes. God has removed the boundaries. Right. Now it's your turn. Right. God has removed the boundaries. He's got Hollywood shut down. He's got a lot of things that's going on that occupied our time. Right. Somebody just told me the other day, there's not even no ball playing going on. Sports has been shut down. All the things have been shut down. So God has removed the boundaries. The things that sometimes that try to put barriers on us hearing the voice of God. All right. So it's time for us to now remove the barrier that is, uh, that is hindering us from hearing the voice of God. Amen. I love what Brother Tiddy said 
Amen. And I wrote it down. He said, if you don't allow it to get into your spirit, it cannot affect your destiny. If you don't allow it to get down in your spirit, it can't affect your destiny. If you will begin to wake up the spirit of the living God inside of you, it cannot affect you. You're not going to walk around with your head down. You're not going to walk around with your hands limp. Uh, but there will be a shout of the praise. Uh, amen. Not, not because everything's going good, but because God's good. Amen. Zechariah. And we find that he begins to prophesy. Zechariah, he finds, he sees visions. And in this vision, he he begins to record about some things that he saw about the new Jerusalem, God's city, and uh, and how God feels about his the boundaries. And Zechariah chapter two and verse one, he said, "Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand." So I said, "Where are you going?" And he said it to me to measure Jerusalem, to see what it is, what is the width, and what is its length. And where and there was an angel who talked with me going out, and another angel was coming out to meet him. In verse 4, he said, Who said to him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. God is simply saying, don't limit me. Do not go out there and think that you're going to measure and put a line on me. Don't think that you're going to put me in a box or limit to me to a certain, amen, length and width and depth. Amen. Can I tell you, there has not never been a man that has exhausted the length, the breadth, and the height of who God is. He's a great big God. He's so big. Amen. The universe is found in him. All the Milky Ways is in him. That's how big God is. Hallelujah. Beyond what the telescope can see, that's where God still is. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. So God is saying, don't limit me. The first thing he told his people, amen, when Lazarus come walking out of a tomb, he told them, loose him and let him go. He don't like anything that he has set free to be bound. I'll say it again. Anything that the Lord has set free, he does not like it to be bound or have All boundaries right. on it. All right. He wants it to be loose so that we can move and flow and operate freely in the Holy Ghost. Yes. He also said, freely you have received, and freely you must also give. There has been a shift in how that we live our lives. Amen. I know that there has been a lot of change. There's been a lot of change in my life in how that we operate. Because I'm right now, I'm, I, I, I'm looking for an amen out there, and I know I can't hear you, but I hope you, you're amen. texting it. And, I hope that you send him in, amen. And, and uh, there has been a shift in how we live our life. Woo. My God, I just felt another wave of the Spirit. Church, uh, amen, I'm telling you. Amen. We went in this one way, but we coming out of it a different way. We coming out of this thing stronger than we've ever been. We're going to be rising up from the ashes of this thing. And we're going to see the glory of God manifested. And we're going to see the light of rain that God promised us. Amen. So much has changed. Work, school, and everyday life. Everything's been shifted. Everything's been changed. And you can say that we have been given some boundaries of what we can do or what we are allowed to do. Right. Amen. We all feel in that. But let me tell you something. That is only in the physical stance. It's the only physical realm. One of our dear precious elders that I had the most honor and privilege to have in our home and to be able to have the voice in our life is Sister Nona Freeman. Sister Nona Freeman Amen. I even came here to POC and she preached for us. Amen. She has now went to meet her reward in heaven many years ago. But I remember one time when she was telling us that she went to a place, I believe it was there in Africa, and she said that the lady come up to her and said, oh, it's so good to see you again. She said, honey, she said, I've never been here before. 
And uh, she said, oh, yes, ma'am, you visited me many times. He said, ma'am, I'm telling you, I've never been here before. And it dawned on her that the angel of the Lord had already went before her. Amen. And prepared the way for Sister Nona Freeman. They already knew who she was because the spirit of the Lord went before her. And that's what I feel. I feel that the Lord has sent the angels of the Lord before us uh, to prepare the way of the Lord. Uh, I believe it's time to trim your lamps, uh, and I believe to make sure you got all in your lamp. Uh, hallelujah. It's time, amen, the bridegroom is about to come. Uh, go you out to meet him, for the bridegroom is on the way. We must not allow this uh, mentality. Amen. Let me back up. I missed something. Amen. You could say that we have been put boundaries and we, uh, that, that what we can do and what we are allowed to do. Amen. We cannot hear me, POC church body, I'm preaching to you. We cannot allow this type of mentality to creep into the hearts and minds of God's people. You are not limited. You are not coordinated. Did I say that right? Quarantine. You're not quarantined in the spirit. Amen. You can't quarantine what you got inside of you, friend. It has all power and it has all authority. Right, right. Acts 1 and 8 is still active, even though you can't be in this building. Acts 1 and 8, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world, and in, in the earth. It's the power that was poured out in, the, in, in Acts chapter 2. Let me read it for you. Acts chapter 2, verses 2 through 4. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothed the tongues as a fire, and it set upon each and every one of them. And they were all filled. And they were all filled. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues yes. as the Spirit yes. gave them the utterance. Yes. Jesus moved from the outside and he come to live on the inside. Yes. I shall be in you. Here's the scripture that he said, I'm coming, I, I'm with you, but I'm, a shout, I'm, I'm about to become in you. John chapter 14, verses 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, here's what he said, verily, verily means pay attention. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall you do also. Yes. Is anybody ready at PLC? Are you ready to start doing some works? Are you ready to start seeing the supernatural God that you got living in you start flowing out of you? Now here's the deal and here's the ticket. Listen to me. When God does it, you don't take the credit. And if God don't, you don't take the blame. This ain't you or me on the, on the, on the chopping block here. This is about the power of the name of Jesus. Uh, and there ain't no flesh ever going to glory in God's presence. Uh, this was birthed by the power of the name of Jesus. Uh, and it's going to be through his glory. It's going to be because yes. of his glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. Miracles, my friend, if you hear by the way of the well, and you've got a circumstance in your life that they can't fix, can I tell you, try Dr. Jesus. Yes. Uh, amen. He's got a cure. He's got a way. Uh, all power in heaven and earth. Uh, I, you read through the scripture, he healed the blinded eyes. He opened the blind and the deaf ears and the lame that was able to walk. Even leprosy was cleansed, amen, by the touch of the master. And whosoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Here's the key, amen. You have to get verse 13. You have to come underneath and remove every barrier that's trying to keep you from fulfilling verse 13. If ye love me, keep my commandments. If you want to move of God in your life, 
Find out what those commandments are. Get into the word. And I promise you, if you love me, he said, you will keep my commandments. It's the key to open up the supernatural. Verse, verse 16. And I will pray to the Father and he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Anybody want the forever presence of God? Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I don't want just a temporary touch, but I want to wake up in the presence of God. I want to go to bed at night in the presence of God. I want every day of my life, I want to feel the presence of God. And then he goes on to say in verse 17, and here's the key is what you have to know. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Yes. I don't know about you, but it's time, amen, for the church now to get Jesus from the outside yes. and get Jesus on oh, the yeah. inside. Because I can tell you, if you got Jesus on the inside of you, you've got the healer living with you. You've got the way maker living inside of you. You've got the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. The very one who spoke the earth into existence is now living inside of this earthly vessel. My God, that's why people look at, look at us and they say, why, why aren't you worried? Amen. I want to sing that song. Why should I worry about the highs and my lows? Ups and my downs. By my faith, I know my God is more than enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does anybody know your God is more than enough? Hallelujah. Amen. So he said, I shall be in you. It's the spirit in us. Who would not, who would not want the spirit of the living God living and dwelling inside of you? Listen to me, brothers and sisters, my dear friends. If you have never felt the awesome power of God, amen, when you go to an old-fashioned altar, just the same way they did back in the older days when they was in, the, amen, when Jesus told them, go and tarry, amen, they was there for 10 days waiting for the promise to come in a prayer meeting. And when they finally got in one mind and in one accord, the Holy Ghost fell. The Bible says there came a sound as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they all began to receive the baptism right. of the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you tonight, if you ever read anything about Daniel, one thing Daniel did, Daniel saw into our day. Daniel was able to see beyond his current day. And he looked all the way down past 2020 and he saw some things and he began to prophesy what he saw, what the Spirit was showing him. And one of the things that Daniel wrote down in, in chapter 11 and verse 32, I still believe what Daniel said. And here's what he wrote down for you and I today. And such as, as, such as do weakly against the covenant shall he corrupt with flatterness. But the people who do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. I believe that this is now the time that those who are God-feeling, God-filled, God-believing, amen, God-fearing, they are the ones that need to rise up in this hour to see the glory of God manifested, amen, through signs, wonders, and miracles. The word know here, when he says the people that know their God. If you'll look that up in the Hebrew language, you'll find that that word know, it means personally in relationship. Daniel saw into our day because he had a personal relationship with God. Daniel spoke this before the Holy Ghost was ever poured out on the day of Pentecost. This is in the Old Testament. The Holy Ghost was not poured out until the New Testament. And then all of a sudden, here comes Mark on the other side, amen, of the New Testament. Amen. Matthew, Mark, the second book on the New Testament side. Here comes the voice of Mark. And he says in, verse, uh, in chapter 16 and verse 15, 
And he said unto them, Go ye all into the world and preach the gospel. Amen. To every creature. Amen. What does this mean for you and I? It means there's no boundaries. Everybody gets the same invitation. And everybody gets the same opportunity. Right. Don't let somebody tell you that this Holy Ghost outpouring was just for 120 in an oh, upper room. Right. Don't let nobody tell you that it was just for God's elect. Jesus said this promise is unto you, your children, even as many as our Lord our God shall call. Yeah. Keep reading. In fact, in Acts 2 and 38, the Holy Ghost fell upon those who asked. What must we do? And then you keep reading in verse 39. You're going to find out that that promise was not just for their day, but it's for our day. And if there's ever been a time we need the power of God moving and fire inside the church buildings, we need the presence of God moving. Oh, hallelujah. Stay with me for just a few more moments. Amen. No boundaries. Everybody gets the same opportunity. Don't tell me that God will give me the Holy Ghost and not give somebody else the Holy right. Ghost. All right. That will make him partial. That will make him prejudiced. Right. The Bible says there is no respecter of man in him. Amen. But I will tell you what it does say about him. He said, behold, I'm a jealous God. And don't go off on any other God because I can promise you, amen, he's watching from above and he wants his children to love him and love him only. That's how you get a covenant. That's why he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yes. Hallelujah. And then he goes on to say in verse 16, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he does not believe will be condemned. What in the world is he trying to say? Baptized with what? You got to go back to the book of Acts in the outpouring. And be baptized with the Holy Ghost, uh, which you will find in the very next verse, in verse 6 and 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. In my name they shall cast out demons yes. or devils, and they will speak with new tongues. That is the Holy Ghost outpouring. It's what's still being poured out today. It's still moving. It's still flowing. It's still operating. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I know I'm going a little long tonight, but just stay with Pastor for just a moment. Amen. What did they do in the upper room? They spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gave them the entrance. Listen to me, friend. It's time we get this fear pushed aside. It's time we let God be God. It's time we let God give His people what He wants to give them. The Bible says it's a gift of the Holy Ghost. If there's any gift that you want to receive, you want to give it, you want to receive it from the master. Amen. Amen. Now, verse 18 is coming up. And I want to deal with this scripture. And I'll let you go. But I want to deal with this scripture for once and for all. Amen. I have, we have skirted around this, this, this verse or, or we didn't take the time to really explain some stuff. But I'm going to do that for you tonight. Let's deal with this next scripture. This does not give the church permission to start handling some serpents. Right. In our terminology, <laughs> don't go pick up that snake. Right. Remember, Paul, when he was snake bitten, he shook it all back in the fire in which it came from. Right. It was an accident and it was not on purpose. Can I get an amen? Amen. I've had so many people tell us, amen, are y'all one of those snake handling churches? No. Let me just go ahead and broadcast it. No, we're not. And no, we're not going to be. Hallelujah. <laughs> because I've learned and I've understood something. There is something in the power and the authority of the name of Jesus that I don't have to prove to nobody. God is God all by himself, and I don't need to do anything to prove that what he's able to do. I just walk in, in the blessed assurance that God's got us protected. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. Yes, he does. God help us today. So here's what I want you to understand. We do not have a cure for what we put in our mouth. When you go out to eat, you don't have a clue what you're eating. I'm going somewhere with this. It is a promise of protection of what Jesus put, verse 13, into the word of God for. 
And he said, and they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will no means hurt them. It's accidentally. It is not on purpose. God gives you, a, the word of the Lord said he wants weak and ignorance. Now he calls everybody into repentance. Uh, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Uh, we need to throw this thing aside. Uh, what we, This image that we've been put and been given uh, and begin to serve God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Uh, if you'll do that, you will come to know God in a way you've never dreamed before. Hallelujah. He is a great God. Because you have to get beyond what it said in the beginning of verse 18 to be able to get to the end of verse 18 because here's what the end of verse 18 says. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Let me tell you, the same power that gives me the authority to lay hands on the sick uh, is the same authority, amen, that I can walk into any, any situation. I can have anything come into my body that I don't know about, uh, amen, and have the protection of the Lord upon me. Can I tell you tonight, it's time for the church uh, to arise and be the church. Yes, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is what Jesus is now telling them after his ascension, after his resurrection. He comes walking in the room, and this is what he's telling them. This is what you are to do. So that after the Lord had spoken to them, he was re re received up into heaven and sat down on the right hand of God. In verse 20, and they went out and preached everywhere. Amen. Everywhere. There was no boundary. There was no limitation. There was no area they could not go. They went and preached the gospel everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. These signs shall follow them that believe. I feel that this is the greatest hour for the church. I believe that this is the moment that the church needs to stand and to declare and to prophesy that this is the day. Yes. This is the moment. This yes. is the hour. Yes. In Jesus' name. And if we can, amen, come to, would you stand with me right now? All over your, I know you're out there and I can't see you, but why don't you just stand with me right now? Why don't you begin to let the presence of God once more begin to move in your house? All right. It's time that we remove the boundaries. What is it that's hindering you from walking deeper with God? What is it that has hindered you from moving into that place where you become intimate with God? And that intimacy means that there's always going to be something that will be birthed. You see, if you would only understand that in the scripture, it gives you a clear understanding as it is in the natural. It's the same in the supernatural. When a child, a man is born, a water is broke and that child is about to be born. Amen. It is in the waters of baptism is where you are born of the water. Just like you born in the natural. And when that child comes out from that womb. Amen. Everybody is waiting to hear a sound. Because if there's not a sound, life has not come into that vessel. If you do not have a sound when the master of all creation, when it comes down inside of this earthly vessel, how do I know that Christ came in? Because there's going to be a sound. There's going to be something that's going to flow. Hallelujah. It's not going to be my language. It's going to be his language. The reason why you hear Pastor Denny preaching in English is because my earthly father, was he spoke English. I took up on the language of my earthly father because I understand what he is teaching me. When I get into the spirit from my heavenly father, there will be another sound, not known or taught down here, but only the communication line with him. Hallelujah. Let me go a little further. The Bible says when you get to heaven and the books were open, it's the 66 books of the Bible. And then another book was open which is the book of, or the land's book of life. How do you get that? What is that land's book of life? It's your birth certificate. When you go into a delivery room and that child is born, amen, when you come out from, amen, that, I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but when you come out of that delivery room, you come out of there with a birth certificate whose name is at the top of the list. The father's name is on the top of the list 
and the and that baby always takes the father's name. If you're if you're a bride, amen. The bride's always got to take the groom's name. When you come down and you meet at an altar, you make commitments and a covenant with one another. Right. And when you leave from here, you're no longer two separate people, but you become well, one yeah. because there is a marriage. There is an intimacy yeah. that takes place. Yeah. And you take upon his name. We're the bride. He's the groom. That's right. That's right. Come on. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. So here's the rest of the story. Here's, here's the rest of the story. If you want to know more, just contact us. Yes. We'd be more than glad to sit down with you, help you, walk you through the scripture as the spirit, amen, directs us. Amen. What we need is the word of God to speak. What we need is the word of God to speak louder than anybody else's voice. Yes. And what we need is to sit down and pray and ask God to give you revelation. There is no private interpretation of the word of God. He meant what he said and he wrote what he meant. Amen. Just open the word of God. He will speak to you. And the Bible says that the spirit will lead you into all truth. God is reaching for us today. But for our, in order for him to reach completely to us, we have to remove the barrier. I feel this so strong in my heart and my spirit tonight that if we would remove the obstacles, I don't know what it could be. It could be a family tradition. It could be something of misunderstanding. It could be somewhere where you got hurt somewhere in the church somewhere. I am so sorry if somewhere in the house of the Lord that she was wounded. Even Jesus said he was wounded in the house of his friends. But if I could tell you about a father who loves you, don't let anything or anybody keep you from your relationship with him. Amen. Amen. God is pulling. God is reaching. And if you'll reach why he's reaching. You'll find something that will take you to eternity. In Jesus' name. Oh, God.
be prepared. May we reach those, God, that you have put into our path. Lord Jesus, we got to remove the barriers, the obstacles. God, that's keeping us from fulfilling the mission, the calling that you left with us. And that is, God, to be a witness, to declare. Jesus, wonderful name. Hallelujah. Again, I remind you that our baptistry will be ready. Amen. If you would like to have any type of understanding, you can post anything on our Facebook page. We would be more than willing to help out in any way we can. Amen. To give more understanding and clarity of what this word is declared. It's not my word. This word was here way before any of us ever got here. One, one songwriter said it's been through the fire and it's been through the flood. And still yet it's here. It is my prayer that you would come to know Jesus in a whole different way. I know that I preach with much passion. It's the only thing I know. But tonight I felt just a double portion of anointing on my heart tonight to bring to you the word of the Lord. It all went a little long this evening. God is reaching, but you got to remove the barrier so he can move beyond the barrier. The only problem about building walls, it does keep things out, but sometimes it keeps the one that's trying to get in, the most important one, keeps him out. Jesus will reveal himself to you the day you search for him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. God bless you. It is my prayer that God's hands of protection and provisions to be upon you and your family. God bless you.